Hello, this is David Harper of Bonac Turtle with a brief review of risk contribution of a credit asset to a credit portfolio for FRM candidates. This is from Michael Long, Internal Credit Risk Models. First, I'm showing the formula in its partial derivative form because as a key measure of sensitivity, it's yet another example in the long list of examples in risk measurement where we are using a first partial derivative. In this case, risk contribution is the incremental risk that a single asset exposure contributes to total portfolio risk. So we have the change in unexpected loss for the portfolio given a small change in unexpected loss for the individual credit asset and it's denominated or measured in units of unexpected loss of the credit asset. So that's the first partial derivative format. In practical terms, we use this formula where the risk contribution of the individual credit asset is a function here of the asset's unexpected loss multiplied by this, the summation of the product of all of the other assets unexpected losses in the portfolio multiplied by the respective pairwise correlation everything divided by total portfolio loss in just a minute I'm going to show you an example with a two asset portfolio but first the key difference between risk contribution and unexpected loss of the asset my example is going to be a portfolio consisting only of two credit assets. So these could be loans or bonds. Here in purple is the risk contribution of one asset and in red the risk contribution of the second asset given their respective exposures. If we add the risk contributions together we get the portfolio unexpected loss. So here the portfolio unexpected loss is about $44. The risk contributions are additive for, for, for portfolio unexpected loss. And here as I move to the right, I'm increasing the exposure of asset number two. And so its risk contribution increases, but still the sum of the risk contributions is portfolio unexpected loss. And so here, if this is, if the total pie represents portfolio unexpected loss, and remember, unexpected loss is the estimated vol volatility of potential loss in value of the portfolio around the expected loss. Or put another way, it's the standard deviation of the value of the portfolio at horizon. If that's the whole pie, then each wedge here is the risk contribution of an individual credit asset. So here in red is the risk contribution of this credit asset and all of the wedges together add up to portfolio unexpected loss. But if we look at this individual asset, it has its own individual unexpected loss, but that is going to be greater. If we add up the unexpected losses of each of the credit assets, we're going to get something that's greater than the portfolio unexpected loss. Rather, it's the sum of the risk contributions that give us portfolio unexpected loss. And this is part of why it's really the risk contribution measure that we care about. So now let's look at an example. Okay, I'm going to start at the bottom here with exposure or credit asset number two. And per previous screencasts, I have some assumptions there about the adjusted exposure, the probability of default, the loss given default, and then the volatility of both the probability of default and the loss given default. That allowed us to get the expected loss and more importantly for our purposes here, the unexpected loss of the individual credit asset number two here. So if I move up, I have the same thing, a separate set of assumptions for credit asset number one, and it has an individual unexpected loss. So then I'll move up to the top, and I've carried up both of the unexpected losses of each individual credit asset. So asset one has an unexpected loss 
of $40.9. Asset 2 has an unexpected loss of 22.3. Again, that unexpected loss being the standard deviation of the asset value at the horizon. It's an estimation of the volatility of the potential loss around the expected loss. And now I want to calculate the risk contribution, let's say just for asset number two. The other parameter I need here is the default correlation between the two assets. And I'll assume here 5% denoted by rho in our formula. And now I can compute the risk contribution of asset number two. And I'll just build that formula here by implementing our formula here for the risk contribution of asset two. We can see it's the unexpected loss of asset two. That's right here multiplied by the summation here first of unexpected loss of asset one multiplied by the default correlation between one and two so I've got that part now I need to add a term for the other asset which is asset number two so we need the unexpected loss for asset two multiplied by the default correlation of asset two with itself, which is one, so I don't need to put anything else there. So you, hopefully you can see right here, I've implemented the numerator. Unexpected loss of two multiplied by unexpected loss of one multiplied by the default correlation plus unexpected loss of two. And I'm going to divide that by the portfolio unexpected loss, the denominator. So now I've implemented this formula for the risk contribution of asset two, and I get 11.4. And let me just kick up the default correlation to 20%. And now I have 13.5. And the graph here plots the risk contribution of asset two, that's the $13.5. And the risk contribution of asset one is the 13.6. And now the last thing I want to show you is that if I add these two risk contributions together, I get the total height of this bar. That's right here. That's 50.4. And like I said, the key thing we want to remember here is that 50.4 matches the portfolio unexpected loss. We can break down the portfolio unexpected loss into its component risk contributions. However, if I were to add the unexpected loss of each individual asset here, I get a larger number. The sum of the individual unexpected losses will be greater than the portfolio unexpected loss. So I hope this was helpful. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.